with the deep unconscious sigh which not even the nearness of the telescreen could prevent him from uttering when his day's work started. Winston pulled the speak right towards him, blew the dust from its mouthpiece, and put on his spectacles. Then he unrolled and clipped together four small cylinders of paper, which had already flopped out of the pneumatic tube on the right-hand side of his desk. In the walls of the cubicle, there were three orifices. To the right of the speak right, a small pneumatic tube for written messages. To the left, the larger one for newspapers. And in the side wall, within easy reach of Winston's arm, a large oblong slit protected by a wire grating. This last was for the disposal of waste paper. Similar slits existed in thousands or tens of thousands throughout the building, not only in every room but at short intervals in every corridor. For some reason, they were nicknamed memory holes. When one knew that any document was due for destruction, or even when one saw a scrap of waste paper lying about, it was an automatic action to lift the flap of the nearest memory hole and drop it in, whereupon it would be whirled away on a current of warm air to the enormous furnaces which were hidden somewhere in the recesses of the building. Winston examined the four slips of paper which he had unrolled. Each contained a message of only one or two lines, and the abbreviated jargon, not actually newspeak, but consisting largely of newspeak words, which was used in the Ministry for internal purposes. They ran. Times, 17384. BB speech malreported Africa, rectify. Times, 1912-83. Forecasts 3YP fourth quarter 83 misprints, verify current issue. Times, 14-284. Mini plenty malquoted chocolate, rectify. Times, 312-83. Reporting BB day order, double plus ungood. Refs unpersons, rewrite fullwise upsub anti-filing. With a faint feeling of satisfaction, Winston laid the fourth message aside. It was an intricate and responsible job, and had better be dealt with last. The other three were routine matters. Winston dialed back numbers on the telescreen and called for the appropriate issues of the Times, which slid out of the pneumatic tube after only a few minutes' delay. The messages he had received referred to articles or news items which, for one reason or another, it was thought necessary to alter, or, as the official phrase had it, to rectify. For example, the third message referred to a very simple error which could be set right in a couple of minutes. As short a time ago as February, the Ministry of Plenty had issued a promise, a categorical pledge, were the official words, that there would be no reduction of the chocolate ration during 1984. Actually, as Winston was aware, the chocolate ration was to be reduced from 30 grams to 20 at the end of the present week. All that was needed was to substitute for the original promise, a warning that it would probably be necessary to reduce the ration at some time in April. As soon as Winston had dealt with each of the messages, he clipped his speak-written corrections to the appropriate copy of the Times and pushed them into the pneumatic tube. Then, with a movement which was as nearly as possible unconscious, he crumpled up the original message any notes that he himself had made, and dropped them into the memory hole to be devoured by the flames. What happened in the unseen labyrinth to which the pneumatic tubes led, he did not know in detail, but he did know in general terms. As soon as all the corrections which happened to be necessary in any particular number of the times had been assembled and collated, that number would be reprinted, the original copy destroyed, and the corrected copy placed on the files in its stead. A number of the times which might have been rewritten a dozen times still stood on the files bearing its original date, and no other copy existed to contradict it. Books also were recalled and rewritten again and again, and were invariably reissued without any admission that any alteration had been made. And so it was with every class of recorded fact, great or small. Everything faded away into a shadow world in which finally, even the date of the year, had become uncertain.